So today I think I'm going to tell you a couple little stories. Um, I guess you could say they're feel-good stories. They're life-saving stories for me. So let's get started. One love, one aim, one destiny. Hiya, I them say more. I every pass it them a short or more. I and the dance floor and them. So let's get started. Well, as you know, as you've been following my videos, I've moved to Armenia in Colombia and I've moved from Manizales to Armenia. And within the last month or so, I've got my uh, resident visa here, which means I get my cedula, your national identification card. And this gives you all the rights and privileges. Of so I get my new apartment and I jump through all the hurdles that uh, that entails. See my last video. And I have to get my internet turned on. Now, I need pretty good internet. As you know, I have to upload videos, and uploading videos is a resource hog. And if I don't want to wait a day or so to upload videos, I really need fiber optic. In fiber optic, you get a pretty close to up and down, upload and download, uh, fairly evenly split. Most of the internet in Colombia is DSL, plug into the telephone line. And while the speeds can be good, they're usually not because there's a lot of people on that service and the more usage there is, the slower you become. You divide it up among all those people. So in fiber optic, you get really a, a direct line. And so that's what I need. So I go to Movie Star. Now I'm with my new friend Camillo. Now who is Camillo? He's the guy that the owner of this apartment who lives in Bogota, he's a friend of that person and the owner just asked him if he would come and walk through the apartment with me and give me the keys, which he did. Now he's not an employee or anything, he's just a friend and the guy in Bogota couldn't be here because I wanted to move in right away. And I didn't want to wait. So, you know, his friend took care of that. But he not only took care of that, but he walked me over to the notary, helped me with the contract, um, took me to the bank and showed me how to uh, send payment to the guy in Bogota, or to his bank, rather. And I told him that I needed to stop at Movistar, which is on the way back, because they handle fiber optic home internet here in Armenia. So walking back, I go in and everything's fine and it's a year contract and I give him my cedula and uh, at first he didn't, they don't get a lot of call for fiber optic. And as I mentioned previously, you have to be in Stratus 5 or 6. Well, I'm in 5 so, you know, I'm eligible. So he puts my information in the computer and it comes back, they can't give me a contract. They can't give me a contract because my cedula is too new. It's a Movistar requirement. Now, I don't know if it's six months or a year. Actually, the guy who was taking care of me, he, he, he didn't know how long it took. All he knew is he answers, entered it in the computer and it kicked back with this. Now, and one of the reasons he doesn't know is because there's so few gringos around here. He's never run into it before. So, I'm sitting here needing to get my internet with a year contract because I need fiber optic and they're telling me that I could go to Uno Tigo, for example, and I can get DSL and it's not an issue. It's a, it's a movie star thing. But then I'm going to have problems. And so I'm just, oh my God, whoa, what do I, what do, I do? Never thought about this. And so my new friend Camillo is sitting there and he takes out his cedula and he hands it to the guy and he says, I'll do the contract, just make sure you pay it. Are you serious? I mean, I, mean, I barely know the guy. I've known him for a total of a uh, couple hours over the course of two days. And he said, yeah, yeah, just, just pay it. Don't worry about it. I know you need it. Wow. So 
There we go, story number one. I got my internet through the kindness of somebody I barely knew. Hello. 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 Story number two. When I checked into my temporary apartment, a little furnished thing, very tiny, a uh, bedroom, a bathroom, a living room and kitchen combined. It's like a tiny, tiny studio. Guess what? The owner of that is in Bogota. So he sends over this girl named Sophia to basically just meet me there when I arrive, show me around the apartment, which takes, you know, just spin in a circle, and give me the keys. So she does that. And we chat for a little while. She doesn't know any uh, English at all, and she was curious, not seeing any gringos, actually, first one she ever met. So she had some questions, and so we chatted for maybe, I don't know, half an hour or so before she left. A very nice person. Oh, while she was there, her cousin stopped in, who was also a very nice person, but you know, she was just kind of hanging out, throwing a question every once in a while, and laughing every once in a while, but. Uh, Sophia was the one that um, I was having my conversation with. So when I had to move all my stuff from that little apartment, she volunteered to use her car to drive me with all my stuff to the new apartment. So that was really nice. When we got in the car, she's only had her driver's license for six months. She's 30 years old, but she's only been driving for six months. So she asked me if I could drive. Well, fortunately, I have a driver's license that's good here for another five months. So I said, yeah, sure. So I drove through town and drive it. Well, they were very impressed with my driving skills, not realizing that, you know, we drive in the United States from the time we were born, practically. So, you know, navigating through all the crazy traffic, and it, it wasn't any, any big deal. So let's move on. Now I need to get my furniture. I need to get a bed, first thing I want to get. And so she's messaging everyone, how's everything going? Do you need anything? And uh, I said, well, I'm going to go and check out a bed. So she insisted that her and her cousin go with me. She said, well, you know, we'll drive and make it easier. And so she gets here at my new apartment and gives me the keys. And so let's go. So we traffic was horrendous and it's raining so we go down there and we have to circle the block a few times and we found a place to park which can be an issue we go up and we look at the bed she proceeds to negotiate for me and she negotiate i had i was going to negotiate and i had a price set in my head and i told and she asked me and i told her and, and pff, she took it below that and um, I really got a great deal as a direct result of her negotiating tactics. And she was talking so fast, I didn't catch all of it, but she was really pressuring. Um, I guess she found out that the other person needed to sell, they were moving, and, and so she took full advantage of it. She was quite good at it. So I saved a bunch of money on that. So but now we need a truck. And I start to pay the woman. She grabs the money and says, no, we'll pay her once we load it on the truck. Okay. So she says, come on. So we walk, and she knows where the trucks are all parked. It's about three blocks away. And there's a series of trucks, big canopy ones that are about 10 foot tall, but they're little Nissan pickups. So she talks to the first guy, and he's, you know, he's waiting for someone. She goes to the next guy, and he tells her, "Yeah, I can do that for thirty thousand." And and so she she gives him, I don't know, this hard luck story. I don't know what the deal was, but he agreed to do it for twenty thousand. So we go back to she gets his number. We go back to the apartment, and we take the bed from the third floor down to the first floor. And she calls him once everything's down there. He comes over. Her and her cousin are loading the bed along with the truck driver. I said, you don't have to do this. You know, no, no, no. So, you know, I'm taking stuff too, but there's a lot of pieces to this bed. So we get it in there. And she has to drive back because the truck driver wants me to give him directions on how to get back to the apartment. 
So we get back to the apartment and I unload the stuff off the truck so he can get going and I pull it in by the elevator. They show up and they start hauling everything upstairs. Once we got it up into my apartment, they actually start putting it together. No, 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 no. I mean, this just, it's just too much. I appreciate this help, but this is crazy. It's just too much. They work nights. I know that they were tired and it's, uh, you know, it was just, it was just a step too far, but greatly appreciate it. It was so nice and never asked for anything. Didn't ask for gas money, nothing. It, it was just out of kindness. And um, I will find a way to make that up to them because I am really appreciative, but I thought I would just sit on it for a while. So I get a message from them once in a while, everything okay, do you need anything? Uh, you know, just let me know. It's really nice to have people so outgoing and so friendly, and it's not because they're looking to get a handout. It's just genuine and sincere. And it's one of the reasons I have always loved Armenia. Going back 16 years or so, it's always been like that. Always. They call it the city of Amable. Friendly city. And it is true. So those are my two stories for today. I hope you like them. Please like subscribe, all of those good things. And if you're so inclined, uh, if you look below, I've got a Patreon account, I've got a GoFundMe account. Uh, if you want to contribute, it's many thanks. Enjoy these videos, hopefully. Uh, I'm open to comments, suggestions, but if you're a troll, just forget it, I'm just gonna delete you. Again, thank you very much, I'll see you next time.